Barista Fujian Sosa said earlier, a common lawyer, a legal mind, here in the country's economic capital, to realize our guest for tonight. Barista, good evening. Thank good you so much for coming. Good evening, madam. Thank you for inviting me. Good evening once again. Barista, you say that the uh, 47 uh, arrested Anglophones in Nigeria that were transferred recently to Cameroon were simply abducted and not arrested. Why did you say so? Yes, I say so, and I want to dispute the number. I don't know where that number is coming from. Uh, I say so because there's a procedure for extradition, and that procedure is a, is a, is a procedure in court. And uh, there has been no court hearing since these people were abducted on the 5th of January. There has been no court hearing. And Mr. Churuma did not tell us a lot of things. He didn't tell us when they arrived Cameroon. He said few hours ago. No, he said few hours ago they were given they were given over to the judiciary to the judicial authorities. He did not say that few hours ago they arrived Cameroon. No. Unless I didn't hear you well. I didn't hear him well. Now extradition must have a judgment. If Mr Shuruma keeps using the word extradition, he should publish that judgment. It should publish that judgment by the Abuja High Court. It should publish that judgment by the Abuja High Court that authorized the Nigerian government to hand over those people to them. So the only other option that is left is kidnapping. There is this interesting uh, uh, post or outing of a human rights lawyer that has actually written, uh, and let me quote him, his words, he said that the transfer of Sisiku Ayuka and others was not the decision of Nigeria's Attorney General according to the Nigerian Extradition Act. Exactly. The Attorney General must be moved and that the suspect given the opportunity to defend themselves. Exactly. It is everything other than deportation. Those were his declarations. Exactly. Uh, is that what you are talking about? That is what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about. The Attorney General of Nigeria knows nothing about how these people were brought to this country. Therefore, the judicial system in Nigeria knows nothing about what, how, how, why, the, how these people were gotten from Nigeria. And the only other thing left is a very well worked out kidnapping organized between the two secret services of Cameroon and Nigeria. There are no other ways. And when a Nigerian government knows about it, they have to take responsibility. Because the United Nations High Commission for Refugees is in Nigeria. What is the United Nations High Commission for Refugees saying about this? And let Mr. Churuma show us these people who have arrived Cameroon. Because since the fifth of January, nobody, nobody has seen them. No. Nobody has seen them, Barista, up to and including now that I'm talking to you. No lawyer, no family member, nothing, nothing, nothing. If they are in Cameroon, where are they? Have they been seen by family members? Have they been seen by any lawyer? Where are they? Barista, they are terrorists. From Hang from them. Let me finish. Uh, uh, okay. them. Bring them to the press. I said, these are terrorists because they, they, they consider them, uh, they, this government considers those people terrorists. So, if they are terrorists, they, therefore they are dangerous. Show us on the screen, CRTV or whatever network that they use, so that we know, we Cameroonians will have it, we are entitled to know, to see the faces of these people. And calling them terrorists, it therefore indicates that their fate has so far been defined. Yes, they have, they they have already defined, they have already defined indicated what that they are, are those responsible for the atrocities being committed in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon. Does it mean that the court that they are going to be tried in is already known? If it's a military tribunal, then it is, it is sure we are ready to what, what the outcome is going to be. But I want to also to sound an alarm. I may be pessimistic, pessimistic, but nobody has seen any of those people. Are they alive? Are they living? Let's see them. That's another curiosity. Barista, That's another curiosity. Barista, the, the Minister of Communication has actually hailed the military cooperation between Cameroon and Nigeria because we're talking about, you are talking about the fact that there's no legal provision 
that uh, allows Cameroon to extradite uh, those that have been arrested, refugees from neighboring Nigeria to Cameroon. Uh, could there be some bilateral ties because of the cooperation? I want to give that. I want to give that to them. That is a they, they may be some bilateral be agreement. But that social. agreement operates only during war. These people were taken by DSS in Nigeria police. Was there any war situation where they say this they were captured at the war front, just like we captured, Cameroon captured Nigerian uh, 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 terrorists in the north and handed the terrorists to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to Nigeria? That was in a war situation where terrorists were captured. These people were holding a meeting in a hotel. Were they armed? Were they dangerous? Were they an, a, 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 a war situation? Nigeria and Cameroon will have to explain to the world what is going on here. Now, the African Bar Association talked about the illegality of the arrest. We call this all officials of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees in Nigeria talking about it, calling it illegal, that it is illegal to transfer a refugee from the country that is hosting them, like in Nigeria, to Cameroon after they have been arrested. What do you have to say about the current twist of events? Well, the, well uh, the African Association is doing what it has to do, but they should also know that dictators don't listen to that type, to that kind of thing. So they should do more than that. They should do more than that. They have to go to court somewhere, somehow. If they are really serious, it, it, it's pronouncements alone will not do it. But I want to sound an alarm. Where are these people? If they are in Cameroon, let the Minister of Communication, government spokesman the security people to display them and we see them on the screen because since the feet of January nobody has seen them one of the biggest question what will happen from now after it has been confirmed that they are in Cameroon what will happen between now and well, uh, 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 I don't know whether they will allow lawyers to see them the next few days will tell if they allow lawyers it's to see still, them it's still an uncertainty what will happen if there's uncertainty we don't know what is going on Mr. Shuruma can come and run his mouth and say all whatever he wants to say, but we want to see proper action. We want to see, we Cameroonians are interested to see his court terrorists. Even if they have to chain them, to chain them and defend them and we we'll see them. Now, Barisa, what will be the impact of this on the current situation in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon that has been going on for more than one year now? The situation is already very volatile. The situation in North and Southwest is already very volatile. I am suspecting that it's going to escalate. It's going to escalate. That's my suspicion. As a political observer, I think that they, they have thrown uh, petrol on an existing fire. Because do they have to do that? Why do they not go legally? If these people actually were arrested in Nigeria normally, they should have had their day in court for extradition, for extradition so that a judgment should be issued. If Mr. Churuma is talking about extradition, let him publish the judgment of the Abuja High Court. No, Barista, it's uh, observers have it that for the Cameroonian authorities to work in collaboration with Nigerian authorities to secure the transfer of the arrested uh, Ambazonian leaders from Nigeria to Cameroon. It means that the situation of refugees, thousands of them that are in Nigeria, is also going to be very Exactly. Difficult. That is it's my going to fear. Be another problem. That is my fear. It means the, they are not safe in Nigeria. The, That's implica another issue. the implication of what has just happened means that the refugees in Nigeria are not safe. We, English speaking people in this country, we don't have any place to run to. If you are being pursued today, you cannot escape to a neighboring country because we, are, we, are, we, we have Nigeria, which, we, which I thought up to now was a place where an Anglican who is escaping persecution, political persecution, can run to. Number two, we are surrounded by Francophone countries who listen to the, to the BIA regime. So we are finished. We are in a pot. Everybody is in a pot. And the worst of it is that the refugees in Nigeria um, do, not, uh, do, do not have protection at all because the High Commission for Refugees has failed everybody because they, cannot, they have not come out with any communique up to now.
since these people had, were known to be in Cameroon. They had said nothing. Are you what talking about the, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees? Yes. They are making a series of outings stating the number of Cameroonians. Can, they, ca can they carefully say that they saw those leaders in Nigeria? I have not seen anything that suggests that they saw them. Nobody has seen those people since the feet of January. Now, Barista, if there, there were proposals that you would give as far as the current situation is concerned, if you were to give some recommendations, what would they be? The, the people that were supposed to pilot the negotiations to now have been arrested. That is in their life. If they think that they have cut the head of the struggle, of this struggle, they are lying because it has instead put fire in the whole thing. Until that fire quenches a little bit for any dialogue to take place. The only solution is a dialogue, an inclusive dialogue. There is no country without problems. But it looks like the Dia regime is not interested in any kind of dialogue, Mr. Shuruma said it. We do not negotiate with terrorists. We are not going to negotiate with secessionists and terrorists. And he called the people who have arrived, that is if they are, in the, if they are here, because up to now oh, I cannot confirm that they are here until I see them. He calls them terrorists. That so he cannot negotiate with them. And who is a terrorist among us on the phones? Who is a terrorist? I don't know. So, where are we going? We are heading towards a civil war. And there's, I don't know whether there's any way to prevent it. Thank you so much, Barista. Barista, they're predicting a bleak future as far as the anglophone crisis is concerned. Barista Fujians, so thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Thank you, Madam. That for was me. a leg of mine, a common law lawyer, joining us in the second part of this newscast. Viewers, we thank you so much for joining us in this edition of the Prime Time 6 p.m. newscast on ATV. We thank you so much for joining us. We